Well, hello and welcome to Doc Onco Physics. Keith Onco here. Today what we're going to be taking a look at is the concept of torque and its application in rotational dynamics. We're going to do a couple of examples. Both of them have to do with things similar to seesaws. The first example is a typical seesaw where we have a, a pivot point right here in the center. right? Um, and we have a couple of weights. We have one over here, and these could be people, but in this case, we're just going to make them weights because it's easier for me to draw a box than it is to draw a person. And so we have some weights. We have a five kilogram weight on the left, an eight kilogram weight on the left, and then we have an unknown weight or mass over on the right, and it's going to be placed 1.8 meters from the pivot point. What we're trying to figure out is just what that mass has to be in order to balance out our seesaw. Because right? what we need to do is we need to balance out the counterclockwise torques with the clockwise torques. Right? Remember clockwise is just like the hands of a clock. They go in the, the direction of the minute hand or the second hand. Counterclockwise would be in the other direction. And I would like my seesaw to be in balance. And so this equation is going to have to be true. The sum of the torques in the clockwise direction are going to have to equal the sum of the torques in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, So that's really what I need to do is find out what all those torques are. If you remember, torque is equal to the force on a, a rotating object or an object that can rotate times the distance from the center of rotation or the pivot point. So I've got the distances all labeled up here. The distance that the eight kilogram mass is from the pivot point is one meter. The distance the five kilogram mass is from the pivot point is two meters. And the distance that the unknown mass is from the pivot point is 1.8 meters, okay? Um, also, all of these masses or all of these weights are being applied at 90 degrees to the seesaw board itself. So we can eliminate the sine theta there because the sine theta, sine of 90 degrees, is 1 in each one of these cases. So we don't have to include the sine theta in our formulas. So let's take a look at the counterclockwise torques that we have. And we're going to equate those to the clockwise torques to then solve for the unknown mass. What do we got? Well, we have a 5 kilogram mass times 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's the acceleration due to gravity, times the distance it is from the pivot point, where well, that's going to be 2 meters. Okay, so there's the torque, the counterclockwise torque from the 5 kilogram mass, plus 8 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, times one meter, because that's the distance it is from the pivot point or the center of rotation. Okay, those are our counterclockwise torques. We have two of them. All right, they're going to have to equal our clockwise torques. Well, what's the mass that we have on the right hand side? Well, it's unknown, so we're just going to call that x kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's 0.8 there times the distance it is from the center of rotation, and that's 1.8 meters. Okay, So now we can just calculate and solve. So one of the things that you'll notice in, these, uh, in a lot of these problems is that we have the acceleration due to gravity in each one of the terms. So just to simplify things, we can cancel those out. Right? And that just makes the math a little bit simpler. So on the left-hand side now, what do we got? Well, we have 5 times 2 is we have five kilogram meters, if you will, plus eight times one, that's eight kilogram meters, is equal to, well, we have x kilogram times 1.8 meters. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. So if we add the five and the eight on the left-hand side, we get 13 kilogram meters is equal to 1.8 x kilogram meters. We divide each side by 1.8 and what we get for our, the number of kilograms that's going to have to be on the right hand side is 
about 7.22 kilograms. So that will be the mass that will have to be at that point there, 1.8 meters from the center of rotation for our seesaw to be in rotational equilibrium. And remember, rotational equilibrium means that the seesaw, or whatever it is, is not accelerating. And in this case, it's not moving at all. So the acceleration would be zero, the, initial, the velocity would also be zero. So we have complete balance. Okay, so that's our first example.